Leopards are the best solution for Ukraine. Here's why. Ukraine has been asking for Western tanks for a long time, especially since its armed forces pushed Russians back from Kyiv and needed to do the same toward all internationally recognized Ukraine's borders. Ukraine was reassured that it would get the Soviet tanks in spring, but why did Kyiv get a guarantee that Western tanks could be supplied? Today we will talk about what has been achieved by this decision for Ukraine and what may be the next steps and Ukraine needs. Hello and welcome, this is the Solutions from Ukraine podcast which is brought to you by the Rubrica Media Outlet. My name is Vladislav Faraponov, I'm the co-host of this podcast and also an analyst at Internews Ukraine, a Ukrainian media NGO. Usually at this moment I introduce my colleague Anastasia Rudenko, who is editor-in-chief of the independent all-Ukrainian Rubrica Media Outlet, but she's on on a business trip now and uh, she's campaigning for more tanks uh, for Ukraine. Joking aside, I will be your host today and before I start, uh, let me remind you that you can support us at Patreon. So Russia's full-scale war on Ukraine approaches its first anniversary. It's really sad for Ukrainians that we still need to explain to someone in Europe, especially why Kyiv needs tanks, for example. On the 11th month of the war, it was really seen in Ukraine as a parallel galaxy. By the way, actually, some of our colleagues, especially international ones, they still say or write about the war in Ukraine. We again ask you not to do this, because Russia for eight years has been saying on its awful state propaganda TV that Nas tam nietu, which means <clears throat> we have no relation to it, uh, referring to its aggression on Ukraine's east, Donbas, uh, its uh, uh, region in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions in Ukraine. It's just the general name. And they claimed it is a civil war. And the reason we ask you not to use this narrative, because Ukraine's enemy continues to use it sometime. In the meantime, we have talked about Ukraine's rebuilding in our first episodes and how strong and positive Ukrainians remain despite Russian attacks on critical infrastructure since uh, October. But this topic tanks, it really brings us closer to a sacred word for Ukraine, this victory. And let me continue with a broader perspective, how tanks ended up on the agenda at all and why it is so important to uh, talk about it. The idea of coordinating efforts of Ukraine's partners and friends was born at the beginning of the full-scale war. The first meeting of the so-called contact group on defense of Ukraine was held at the end of April of 2022. Since then, eight meetings have uh, took place, on which many hopes were placed regarding the important decisions to supply tanks to Kyiv. But at the time of the the meeting, uh, the Rammstein meeting, as, as Ukrainians call it, uh, basically, there were no decision approved regarding tanks. And Ukrainians, I would say, despite uh, that absence of that, de- of that decision at the time, they still had a sense of optimism, even, even after this meeting. Because we also understand that it is getting harder and harder uh, to get more aid, to get more countries joining the sanctions, joining the so-called anti-Russian coalition and others. And tanks is just um, a marker for that, just um, the thing that we can see uh, how much is uh, uh, the West uh, actually willing to support and um, Mm, how fast uh, the Western countries are ready to supply Ukraine with tanks. As a political analyst, I've noticed an interesting trend um, which can be assumed um, like happened on uh, 
on New Year's Eve or or something around that. Again, bilateral talks regarding Ukraine's need have been intensified. So, on one hand, it opens up opportunities for a more open dialogue, which later brings results in the form of tanks, like was uh, applicable to Poland, and air defense system, for example, from uh, Lithuania, the Netherlands, and others. Um, and basically, it was announced after the Ramstein meeting. And the main reason why we are talking about uh, the need for Ukraine to get tanks is um, a, a very rare thing. Uh, the commander-in-chief of the Ukraine's armed forces, a very popular man in Ukraine right now, uh, Valery Zeluzhny, who even sometimes to be considered as a potential candidate for the president's office, uh, in one of his interviews, and I'm saying a rare thing because uh, he he barely speaks to Ukrainian media, but uh, he gave just a couple of international interviews. And he stated that uh, in large numbers, tanks are a guarantee of Ukraine's counteroffensive operations. After that, uh, several interpretations w- were made uh, and uh, Ukraine's um, defense minister Oleksiy Reznikov, he clarified that the number that Mr. Zeluzhny announced, uh, around 300 tanks, were just about several or even one successful military operation. It meant that actually Zeluzhny did not uh, uh, did not refer to the entire victory for Ukraine. So it is a large difference and it is important to understand how much tanks U- Ukraine is really asking for. So at least 300, at least uh, to push Russians back in the east, especially near Bakhmut and, and Solidar, where enormous enormous number of re- of, um, of reports have been uh, have been made about how hard it is for Ukraine's armed forces uh, to keep um, some battalions there and uh, the same applies to uh, my native region uh, I mean the, the south of Ukraine and uh, on the on the Kherson area in the south close to Mykolaiv and Odessa, it, it is still uh, really a problematic region for, uh, for Ukraine too, because, because Russians have been shelling the city of Kherson, which Ukraine liberated on uh, the beginning of November. But at the same time, they have been shelling this uh, city from another bank of the Dnieper River, and again, we also need to push them back from from there too. So the the American uh, side, the Pentagon, stated that taking into account that uh, Ukraine has been capturing uh, some Russian tanks um, in the battles, or uh, Russians just left uh, a great a great many of tanks uh, after their retreat. Ukraine had an advantage in this dimension, but it was relevant in the summer of 2022. And uh, also very important aspect to understand that Mr. Zaluzhny, he actually meant Western tanks, not Soviet ones. So globally, the the situation uh, regarding the location of many of any military aid has not changed since that time. The West does not want samples of its aid to fall into the hands of the Russians. Ukraine completely understands that logic and we do not want that either. And it is clear. All this story regarding how fast Ukraine can get tanks and from which country, sometimes it was seen 
really is a not serious conversation. And I'm referring here to statements uh, made by Germany that uh, they did not want to be like one of the first ones among those who provided tanks to Ukraine and they were waiting for similar decision from the United States and uh, they were waiting for President Biden approval uh, on Abrams tanks and um, it it would allow them to supply Ukraine with the, the so-called Leopard tanks. And perhaps the logic behind that was um, that Germany did not want to like uh, to Ukraine to use it uh, immediately I mean to to use tanks immediately on the contact line another important aspect to understand that I'm going to put it really really mildly the position that Germany uh, was announcing from time to time regarding tanks was really seen in Ukraine as a kindergarten, as we say. Like, uh, we are not going to do this until... Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, um, in Ukraine's perspective, it was really incorrect to compare American and German aid and uh, uh, even to set up basically such a condition so in two years the biden administration has uh, provided military aid to ukraine worth almost 28 billion dollars and germany provided weapons and ammunition for 2 billion 2 billion euros which in ukraine's currency are almost equal in 2022 and actually predicted uh, uh, to allocate 2.2 billion euros in 2023 respectively. Ukrainians see that Germany still hesitates about its role in supporting Ukraine but does not understand that the fate of aid from other countries may depend on such critical decisions and Ukraine has been repeatedly seen this in the example of aid from the United States for example and now the situation has happened again with tanks. So one country starts the process and others are joining it. Uh, and uh, in the end, it, it, it may happen that like uh, several countries uh, uh, who were doubting, I would say, uh, they are actually joining this effort uh, with their even more joy than uh, expected so this situation was really challenging and uh, was not well understood in ukraine too perhaps because germany's nato partners were ready to transfer tanks to ukraine and uh, they have been only waiting for germany's uh, approval to do so and uh, it, it was not surprising for ukrainians that uh, the word schulten already appeared which means uh, actually constant hesitation and finding reasons not to do something. Moreover, I cannot but agree with uh, Taras Chmut, uh, actually head of the perhaps well-known fund in Ukraine to help the armed forces, uh, it is called Return Alive, that one of the conditions for obtaining weapons and ammunition for Ukraine is the ability not only to own these weapons but to service them including rep repairs and the armed forces of Ukraine actually proved that uh, with like uh, with the daily practice and it should be also not forgotten that the needs of the armed forces uh, uh, many times exceed the cap the capabilities of our partners and uh, also exceed the, the number of, of some types of weapons that Ukraine may get. And this is called the so-called dilemma of the donor and the recipient when the capabilities of the donor are many times higher than the needs of the recipient state. And we definitely understand that. But 
uh, again if we ukrainians hear such talks like we will not give you these tanks while others uh, uh, are not given at least one of course uh, it resulted in um, difficult discussions i would say in ukraine because our soldiers they are really they're really paying for such a discussion uh, by their lives such discussions regarding tanks are, con are being conducted uh, on the background of uh, some interesting trips made by some american officials for example the director of the central intelligence agency william burns the former u.s ambassador to russia made a secret visit to kiev in january uh, or in december like uh, it, it 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 is not uh, noted but um, before that he was uh, in kiev only on the eve of the full-scale invasion to pass on intelligence data about russia's plans so in that regard like uh, the continuation of Uh, the discussions uh, regarding why not <laughs> to provide Ukraine with tanks was really harmful for Ukraine and uh, Ukraine really appreciates that um, tanks have been uh, approved and for now Ukraine is only waiting for the implementation of such a decision. Thus the idea of providing Ukraine with additional weapons until spring before a possible counteroffensive um, of Russia or like uh, an attempt uh, to invade Kyiv and other parts of the country again um, makes those discussions that we are talking about today really really important. For example, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Alexei Reznikov, assured that during the contact uh, group meeting there were also cases that um, some countries uh, have been announcing uh, that uh, they are helping Ukraine, but not in public. And it should be also not forgotten that the United States, for example, followed a similar approach in spring of 2022. So... Uh, given almost a year that has passed, uh, the Western partners of Ukraine are also using the reserves to help Kyiv. So it is quite likely that Ukraine will get m more tanks and uh, according to some media reports, Ukraine may get up to 300 tanks. It is the number that, um, that Mr. Zaluzhny uh, has asked for, but at the same time, y Ukraine's armed forces are really expecting that uh, to happen sooner rather than later, because uh, we understand that the logistics is important, and also uh, that Ukraine soldiers should um, have training how to use them properly, but um, uh, also the United States and uh, its Its allies have been mm, noting that uh, Ukraine's armed forces are really creative in adapting to the uh, to the Western military and um, to some standards, to some to some uh, weapons. So it is not a problem for at all for for Ukraine's armed forces, and uh, I'm sure it uh, will not take a lot of time. The decision of Germany to provide Ukraine with with Leopard tanks is really the best solution for Ukraine right now. And uh, uh, we desperately need uh, more support. And uh, it is quite possible that um, in the future, uh, and uh, uh, including uh, like in our podcast and, and Ukraine's public officials will be talking about um, the approval Uh, for Ukraine to get some new new fighter jets, uh, of course, I mean, uh, I mean the Western ones, and uh, I would say the same as Ukraine needs 
tanks and fighter jets to to push Russians back from our land. We also need your support at Patreon and um, you can support us at Patreon by clicking on the link in the description wherever you turned in. And your support is really crucial for us and we will do more reporting on Ukraine. Ukraine will definitely prevail.